Hello everyone. Module 14 discusses post-structuralism and post-modernism. Post-structuralism challenges the assumptions of structuralism. Structuralism is the assumption that there are social forces external and constraining that are outside of us. We've talked about these earlier. Everyone from Durkheim through Marx and all social theorists in between and since have some version of this to some degree. The French versions, in particular of structuralism, focus on the social construction of language and how it's used to maintain social order. For French structuralists, there is a signifier and a sign. This is the work uh, drawn from Ferdinand de Saussure. Um, a sign is anything that carries collective meanings. Uh, it can be a word, you know, an object that we all agree, which means a certain thing. This gives rise to a signifier and a signified. The signified is that idea, object, experience, belief, concept, or feeling that one individual wishes to express to another. The signifier expresses meaning. Both parties in the exchange have an agreed on set of meanings to which to interpret the language. For price structuralist, however, this relationship has become destabilized. Signifiers are no longer connected to one signified, but many. The internal structure of the sign has collapsed. What does this mean? The notions of truth, knowledge, power, and identity are challenged. Social life, is, uh, for, a pro for the price structuralist, is chaos. There is no chance for conceptual unity. In this vacuum, um, as a result, existing notions of truth and knowledge are not seen as universal claims the total understanding, but are reflections of uh, uh, and resulting uh, in a particular privilege, a power-centric point of view. Social structures are constraining forces on individual action and have been replaced by more fluid exercises of power. Postmodernism questions the adequacy of the designation modern. It underscores a skeptical approach to the methods, goals, and ideals of modern society. Postmodernism is skeptical about the promise of modern that would be 20th and 21st century society. Postmodernism sees a rupture with the past as the order of the day. It is particularly well suited to address current advances in technology, virtual reality, and simulation as elements of postmodernist thought, which are now part of the technological landscape. For Foucault, uh, the first of the theorists addressed in this section on postmodernism uh, is concerned with the construction of discourse. He, years, he uses the term archaeology, a historical method whereby discursive practices are unearthed, much like the artifacts of past civilizations. This makes it possible to expose and examine the evolution of human understanding. Knowledge is shaped through epistemes, or bodies of knowledge that shape discourse, linguistics, tools, rules, descriptions, and habits of, of logic. However, for, for Foucault, this isn't uh, a, a power-neutral concept. He uses the term genealogy um, uh, to indicate a method of social uh, historical analysis that, exam analysis that examines the impact of power on power on discourse. Foucault posits that power and knowledge should be fused terms. Foucault examines the rise of video surveillance, for example, and the emergence of what he terms the disciplinary society, among other analytical subjects. Um, he comes up with the concept of a panopticon, uh, a way of uh, being able to observe um, uh, a great many uh, places all at once. He views this as a fundamental um, you know, uh, eruption or break with uh, the modernist uh, notions of liberty. The second theorist addressed in this uh, section, uh, Jean Baudrillard, is a more prominent, is a most prominent postmodern theorist for many. He conceives of a simulacra, a copy of, obje of, of an object for which there is no true original and hyper reality. The reality has always been reproduced. Uh, in this, he uses Disneyland as an example of this. Um, Disneyland is a place where there are reproductions of places that never actually existed. 
they're reproductions of ideas about a place as you know it, it might have existed in someone's mind think about frontier land it's a simulacra of the idealized version of the 19th century American West. To be sure though, there were no places in the actual 19th century American West that remotely resembled Frontier Town. The actual American West was violent and dirty, but you'd never see this in Disneyland. If you'd ever watched the TV show Deadwood on HBO, that miniseries, that was more an accurate reproduction of the American West than Frontierland, but we couldn't make that into a family-friendly theme park. Okay, thank you very much.